here we're going to have a look at our electric actuated wafer butterfly valve. So this is a wafer butterfly valve that goes between two flanges. It'll be a flange either side and the bolts will pass through. Now, this is just one size in the range. So not every size will have these two lots of guide holes. Some will have singles, some will have none. It depends on the size. Now they fit uh, most common flanges, but if you have a look at the flange table and what we've got there, this is watermark approved too uh, and standards mark approved. So it's, it's good for potable water and things like that. Probably if, you, if you're more into just what use of this butterfly valve, maybe just have a look at the video purely on the butterfly valve, but we're going to talk about the combination with the electric actuator here. So on the top you see this is an IP67 electric actuator. We've got the top off this one at the moment. Uh, we've just got it temporarily rigged so we can show you it operating. Uh, obviously when it's on there it looks like this and your connection for your electrical connection will come through the side and these M20 cable glands. Now this is an IP67 unit. Only IP67, you only get that approval if you use the, the proper conduit entry there. It's probably the biggest... Uh, not failure but the letdown that we see is people not putting the right cable gland and they wonder why they got water in their actuator because it's been IP67 it can really I think it's submerged up to half a meter for an hour or, or something like that in the standard so it's great for use especially in Australia in rugged conditions now all come with a manual override all our electric actuators the manual override differs on the bigger ones obviously as you go up in size of butterfly valve this torque required increases so the actuator gets bigger. Now, some will have a hand wheel on the side. Um, this particular one is, is one of the smallest actuators. It's, it's just got a spanner drive manual override here. They also all come with extra limit switches. We have voltage free limit switches in there so it doesn't have to be control voltage. We made a choice a long time ago to go with that because a lot of people would get it and then they would want limit switches after the fact and they can be quite hard to put on there. Uh, or a visual indicator as well, you can, you can see on here. So it's a great unit. Now what we might do is show this operating. Uh, this is an EPDM seat and if you have a look at the stainless steel disc down here, you'll notice there's no uh, pin on this disc either, which is another strong feature and a lot of butterfly valves don't. This is a spline drive. Um, we will just operate this. I might hold it up off the... Maybe if I sit there behind it here, you might see that better. So you have a look, you can see the disc is closing and you can see the visual indicator on the top close as well. Now at the end of its stroke per se, you can hear a click. That is the cam on the drive is coming out and cutting it, cutting the power to the motor. So you still, I've still got my hand on the switch here and that cam, you can see it coming around now. And then it will cut out. Obviously, you've got two extra cams on there for your limit switches as well. They will trigger those. Now, you're looking at, depending on the size of the actuator, this is probably about 8 seconds. In the larger ones, it could be 10 to 12 or even more. If you lose power, this will stay wherever it is. It's not a spring return or fail-safe unit. You can get spring return electric. It's, it's quite expensive, especially when you compare it to a spring return pneumatic. The other thing is the duty cycle, too. Being electric, you can't run them continuously all the time like you could on a pneumatic. So it's slower than pneumatic and you can't run it continuously as well. So we'll just go this and you can have a look at the cycle time. You can see the disc closing. Visual indicator and then it's cut out.